to remain active, multi-celled animals need to get oxygen inside their bodies and then inside the cells. But not all animals use the same method. In general, insects use spiracles, vertebrates use lungs, and fish use gills. But what are the advantages and disadvantages of using each particular method? Well, first off, we have the insects, which use something called spiracles. These are a series of tiny little tubes running along the length of the insect's body, which enable the air, including the oxygen, to be brought in through the tubes from the outside. Then it can just diffuse into the nearby cells by branches of the tubes. This has the advantage of not needing an active, energy-intensive transport mechanism to move the air and can enable the insect to remove perfectly still or still respiring normally. Additionally, like stomata on the underside of the leaf, the ends of the tube can be closed off to reduce excessive water loss through the opened holes. Some insects can improve the oxygen transport by moving the outer body to pump air in and out, alternatively by beating a set of wings. There are of course some disadvantages, the primary one being a limitation on the distance the oxygen can actually diffuse down the spiracles before the concentration in the air is no longer of any real practical use to the insect. This in turn limits the size the insect can grow to. In order for insects to grow much more than a few inches in size, they either need a new method of respiration or for the external oxygen levels to be significantly higher. In addition, of course, being immersed in water can fairly easily result in the insect drowning. Another method of obtaining oxygen is by the use of lungs. Here the air is actively sucked into an internal air sac, which due to the smaller subdivisions inside the sac, means it has a very large surface area for the overall size of the lung. This then needs the gas to be transported around the body by a circulatory system, in this case, normally the blood. The system requires substantial parts of the animal to be devoted to breathing and circulation. In addition, it needs a substantial amount of energy to be consumed, keeping the system operating, and any interruption, either drowning, a heart attack, or excessive blood loss, can be lethal to the animal concerned. This system, however, does enable the animal to become substantially larger than insects. The size increases, the lungs and heart represent a proportionally smaller size of the total body mass of the animal. It's this that enables the largest animals on the planet, like the blue whale, to use lungs, refilling the air on the surface, enabling them to dive for over 20 minutes at a time. This leaves us with gills. Whilst it does seem the obvious method for a living creature immersed in water, it does have a substantial problem in that water has a far lower oxygen content than air does. So though gills are similar to lungs, they have to work far harder to extract what little oxygen is actually in the water itself. Instead of inhaling air, fish need to either be in a fast flow of water or force water across the radiator surface of the gills, which, like lungs, dramatically increases the surface area the oxygen is passing over. However, even with these methods and a very large set of gills, fish still can't extract a great deal of oxygen from the water. To compensate for this, the fish are actually cold-blooded, which means they have a lower met metabolism and therefore a far lower need for oxygen. However, the more active the fish is, the larger the gills proportionally need to be as a result to compensate. The disadvantage of using water as a supply for oxygen is that some conditions mean that the oxygen supply in the water, especially in things like freshwater lakes and streams, can sometimes drop dramatically, resulting in the deaths of large amounts of fish at the same time. Also, without water passing between the surfaces of the gills, these structures actually stick to each other. So if the fish are in air instead of water, they can die of oxygen starvation despite all of the oxygen around them. They have spiracles, lungs and gills. Different ways of extracting oxygen, all with their advantages and disadvantages.